was hard. I had him when I was 16, and for a small time, we lived in a car, we were homeless, and you know, that was like a dark time in our in my life. I mean, he doesn't remember, but it was tough. You know, I just decided one day, this is not how I'm gonna live, and I changed my life. I left that situation, and I went and got help, and got a job, and I got two jobs, and at times I had three jobs, but you know what I mean? I worked, and I provided for him, and we had a good life. It was hard. You know, I really never had, I would say, like a positive father figure, you know, that was around in, in the household. You know, she kind of had to play both roles. You know, she'd work all, all hours of the day, going to work at 5 o'clock in the morning, not coming home till you know, 9 or 10 at night. You know, she really did all she, she could do to, to try and raise me right, and, you know, I think she did a, a great job. Like, growing up, he didn't have a lot of rules because I was young, single mom, but I always told him, like, as long as you tell the truth, you know, you'll be okay in life. So I always just raised him, like, just tell the truth. If you tell me the truth, you won't be in trouble. Tatsby is a little town on the top of a mountain south of Bakersfield and north of L.A. And there was probably one stoplight in the whole town. Everybody knows everybody. And so it was really nice having him to grow up there. And that's where he started youth football. There really wasn't much to do up there, you know, for little kids, you know, growing up and everything besides, like, ride bikes and play sports. You know, I just remember being so small. You know, you could, like, walk to one side to the other side. I had put Ryan into baseball first, and he just, no. So I'm like, when he turned eight, it was a small town. Everybody put their kids in football, you know? I mean, that's just how it was. So I just wanted to keep him in sports because keep him going on the right track. And he loved football. From the moment he ever played it, he loved it. So from junior high to high school, we moved from Tatchby to Bakersfield. Because people would tell me, well, you know, he's good, but in a small town, anybody can be good. I sold all my horses and changed my job and stuff and moved to Bakersfield to give him a chance to see how he would be against better competition. I was doing so well in, in Pop Warner, you know, really good. You know, she wanted to, to see, you know, how, how good I was, you know, in the city. There's more competition down there, so I think that's one of the main reasons why she wanted to, to move me down there to see how I, how I compared against, against that. Bakersfield's a big football town. It takes its football really seriously. A lot of competition between the high schools over here. You know, Bakersfield's hot and it's tough, and uh, you've got to be a little bit ornery to play here. So after his freshman year, where he played JV for us, we knew we had a pretty good athlete. We weren't quite sure how good yet, but the plan was to play him on varsity there, and he'd have played both offense and defense for us. He was all state as an outside linebacker his junior year, 16 sacks. You know, we could play him anywhere. And his thing is he just wanted to win. I mean, man, we never lost any games. Like, he was just running for three, 400 yards. And I remember, like, one time he had, like, a, a game that we only ran, like, 250 yards. And they reported, like, he had a bad night. You know, I guess that was the thing. If I didn't get 300 yards rushing on you, I guess, you know, you stopped me. You know, if I didn't get 400 yards rushing, you know, I guess it was Ryan's not having a good game. So, but it's fun, man. I miss it. You know, I wish it was that easy still. He started getting letters from the time he was like a sophomore. And I think his first letter was from the Oregon Ducks. Like it was crazy, like all the letters we're getting from all these schools and some big time schools were interested in him. And at that time he had like a really good GPA and stuff and he was doing really good. And then he had that one year where he just, he got a bunch of Fs and I mean, it was horrible because it was like in core classes. You know, some days I just didn't feel like going to school. Just, just I was going to school or I'd go to school and, and leave half the day or, or sleep in and it really affected my grades and you know it stopped all the colleges you know it, as soon as my grades started dropping and everything it stopped all the guys from, from coming in. And I just told him Ryan look even if you don't want to play football after high school at least give yourself that opportunity to choose you know what I mean do what you got to do to where when you graduate you can choose to do it or not. First time I met Ryan was the spring of 2006 he was uh, going into his second semester his junior year well, first of all, he was an outstanding talent, and he had to do some academic work to make him NCAA qualified. So I sat him down with a counselor, explained the things he needed to do, and said, uh, we'll get together next fall after your senior season, and if you do what we've prescribed for you in the spring and the fall and in the summer, uh, then the scholarship at Fresno State will be there for you. Ryan was always used to people being like, Ryan, you know what I mean, like, and just, babying him and telling him how great he was and all this and Pat Hill walks into the office and I wasn't there but I can only imagine because <laughs> and tells Ryan you know are you wasting my 
leap in time. You know, he's sitting right there at the table, and uh, he's talking to, to Coach Lewis, and Coach Lewis looks at me, he's like, come here, Ryan, and Coach, uh, Coach Hill looks at me. He's like, Ryan? I was like, yeah, and he's like, are you effing wasting my time? And I was like, I was like looking at my coach, I was like, who is this guy? Like, <laughs> You guys gonna let him talk to me like that? Like, <laughs> and I, I think he got Ryan's attention, but he also cared enough about Ryan and Ryan's future that he, he sat down with him and said, "Hey, you've kind of dug yourself a hole, but this is what you need to do to dig yourself out." Well, I mean, he was a lot like David Carr and those type of players, Logan Mankins that played here. I mean, whenever you have a first-round draft choice, it brings a lot of notoriety to the school. So their names are etched in stone here that they were first-round draft choices here at Fresno State. Because of players like that, we were able to win. Under pressure, they throw it this way, set up the screen, and have room. Jumps over one, gets to the end zone. And it's Matthews who did it. Unbelievable. Well, he was here for four years. After his junior year, we sat down and had a talk. That was the last year before the change in the rookie salary cap. And I told Ryan, I believe you're a first or second round draft choice. And the best thing for you to do, Ryan, is, is to, to get out now because you're going to lose out on a lot of money if you stay. And I hated to see him leave, but it was the best advice I could give him. In high school and college, you know, I remember you know, it was being so well taken care of to feel like, you know, they'd always have my back. and. You know, since I didn't have a you know father figure you know like that at home, you know they're they I guess were the ones that kind of took that role. You know I kind of leaned on them. They taught me a lot, you know, about respect and you know, loyalty and hard work and, and everything, and kind of just kind of shaped me into to being a man. Everybody wants to be a good dad. I want to be a good role model for them. You know I want to be the dad. You know when he gets when he gets older and goes to school or whatever, and they uh they ask you know. What superhero you want to be or whatever, you know, I want to be like, oh, my dad, you know, I want to be doing all the stuff that, you know, I wish I had a dad, you know, taking me to do and growing up and everything, just do all that, install, you know, just a lot of greatness in them and do the best you can and show them, you know, what's right in front of them. Well, I'm really proud of Ryan. I'm very proud of what he's done as an NFL player, uh, but more proud of him as a person and, and the type of man that he is. Ryan Matthews is a good man and he's a good football player. And, and he does things right, and that speaks volumes. I'm really proud of him. And, you know, it's great to watch him play football on Sundays, but I'm, I'm more proud of him for being a great dad to his little boy, Royce. And it just makes me proud, because he never got to experience that. But he's changing that cycle, and he loves that kid so much, and he's a great dad. And, you know, it's just his heart is so full of love for that kid. It's awesome to see. And that, that's what I'm most proud of. Ryan's a very, very good dad. You know, he loves his son. He's so patient and loving and just, I don't know, you could just see that he, you know, he would do anything for that kid, just like he, you know, like my love for him. He has that same love for his son and it's just, it's overwhelming. It's its beautiful to see, you know what I mean? That, that he's become such a great, good man, not just football great, but father great and, you know, being a good man and a good son. 